merit list and thus earning the coveted gold medal. He obtained his PhD degree from the University of Kalyani in West Bengal. Sir is also a qualified chartered accountant and was placed 36th in the merit list of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. His teaching experience spans over 37 years in the field of commerce and management, which includes seven years of undergraduate teaching and 30 years, imagine three decades of postgraduate teaching. As an experienced researcher, Professor Pal has several publications and research papers to his credit and has presented papers in various countries across the world. To mention some of them, like the United States of America, China, etc. Professor Pal has completed uh, a number of funded research projects, some of which include studies on global market on emission trading, forest accounting, and on environmental taxes in India. Presently, Sir is also a successful research guide and till date, six research scholars have successfully completed and been awarded PhD under his supervision. And presently, eight scholars and I must say lucky scholars are continuing their doctoral studies under his expert guidance. So this, with these few words, I present in front of all of you, Professor Anand Mohan Pal. Sir, over to you. Thank, thank you, Ovik, Professor Ovik Mukherjee. Thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, thank you, sir. I uh, thank the Department of uh, uh, Business Management, Bardhaman uh, uh, University, for organizing this. Particularly, Ovik has personally uh, taken all the lead for organizing this event. Thank him. Uh, I now I am um, going to start my session on um, I am uh, going to on accounting for groups under index. So uh, before that, I am going to present the uh, PPT PowerPoint presentation. Yes, sir. You go ahead with sharing the screen. Uh, yes, that I do. Sir, your screen is now visible. Uh, yeah, it, it has become there. full screen. Now. Yes. It has become full yes. screen, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Then, accounting for groups here what i would follow because we have a very limited time and it is a very huge matter to discuss so i have just uh, to present you the slides and what by what i would explain try to explain them because i would not explain how with some other examples whatever i have stated here clearly you need to read them and i i would explain them as and when possible so here both in days 103 and in days 110 this both this would be discussed in uh, this uh, one and a half hour time today i would focus on in days 103 tomorrow i think i would focus on in days 110 now, why uh, these two at, at, a, at the same time? Because in business combination under index 103, we find measurement of goodwill, bargain purchase, gain on bargain purchase, and non-controlling interest, which are, we know, which are required for preparation of consolidated financial statements. But we need to measure them for business combination. Again, in this 110 prescribes principles of preparation and presentation of consolidated financial statements when one equity controls one or more other equities. Thus, for accounting of groups, that is, for parent and its subsidiaries, we may require to apply both 
in base 103 and in base 110. Both are required. And for that reason, I would at first I would take up in base 103, which is business combination. Now, here is one picture at the those who have some exposure to this business combination may uh, maybe feel maybe feeling a bit comfortable to see it otherwise it you have to uh, concentrate more that what happens when business combination in this 103 acquirer here the company what we call purchasing company like that taking up acquirer obtains control over acquiry acquiry means the vendor that is the transferor here it is called acquiry to so acquirer company obtains control over acquiry that is business combination in days 103 when acquiry winds up if it happens so that for purchasing the vendor company the vendor company wins up ceases to exist in that case what happens in that case in acquiries book accounts are closed because that is uh, that is uh, the business is closed the company is closed so their accounts will be closed and in acquirers individual financial statements that means standalone financial statements that is their own financial statements consideration net assets identified and goodwill or gains from bargain purchase would be recognized as per index 103 so index 103 would be applied and all these things would be recognized according to index 103 in the books of the acquirer this would happen if the transferor or vendor company or in the new term under index 103 acquiry wins up or ceases to exist. If the acquiry continues to exist, how it can happen? It can happen if the acquirer purchases a majority shares of the other company so that the other company is the subsidiary in that case again it is a business combination as the acquirer obtains control and then acquiry continues acquiry means the here the subsidiary company uh what we know otherwise as subsidiary company acquiry continues to exist in that case in acquiries book there will be no entry because when you are only purchasing the shares from the shareholders of the subsidiary in the books of the subsidiary there would be no entry so no entry in books of acquiry but in acquirer's book there would be some entry for uh, under in this 103 in there Consolidated financial statements, that is in their set for preparation of consolidated financial statements, accounting set for preparation of consolidated financial statements, they would pass certain entries. What they would do? Now, there are also certain conditions. The parties controlling the business before and after the business combination are different. If you see that the same parties are controlling even before and uh, the uh, 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 control is acquired and after the control is acquired also the same parties are controlling that may happen we will be discussing that that is one situation and if you find the parties controlling the business before and after are uh, are different and are the same okay when they are same that would be another situation and they are different that would be normal because uh, if you if you acquire control of a company then the party is controlling the business would be different 
So in this case, when they are different, then it is business combination in days acquisition method followed. Here it is business combination under in days 103 and acquisition method is followed under in days 103. There is one method there under in days 103 directly that is acquisition method and that is followed. As per acquisition method, acquisition where the acquirer is the legal acquirer. Accounting acquirer is the legal acquirer. Here are also certain differences. I am just placing them that legal acquirer is who are issuing the shares are actually acquiring the control. He is the legal acquirer. But accounting acquirer, ordinarily the same person is the accounting acquirer also. So acquisition where accounting acquirer is the legal acquirer. In that case, ordinarily, normally what happens, it, this is the normal case. Net assets identified, consideration, non-controlling interest, and goodwill or bargain purchase recognized as per index 103 and previously held investment can sell that fair value. Previously held investment means in that company, if you have already certain investment, that had to be cancelled at the same transaction. And it, it may be a reverse acquisition. That is where accounting acquirer is the legal acquiry. That is, who is legal acquirer? That is accounting acquiry. And accounting acquirer is the legal acquiry. That can happen. In that case, accounting acquirer is recorded. Accounting acquirer is recorded in books of legal acquirer. Accounting, uh, actually, in the books of legal acquirer, you would be recording as per accounting acquirer, based on accounting acquirer. I would be uh, uh, with it changing the language I need to. And, I would explain it after some time. Then I am taking the other side. Other side means the this side. The parties controlling the business before and after are different. That I have uh, so far discussed. Then parties controlling the business before and after business combination are the same. If before and after the business combination, same parties are in control. Then it is business combination under common control, which is under index 103 Appendix C. That is not clearly index 103. You have to write index 103 Appendix C. And here, pooling of interest method is followed. Different method. Here, acquisition method was followed earlier. Here, pooling of interest method is followed. I have not discussed fully that. I would come to later. Then in acquirer's book, uh, in acquirer's book, in consolidated final statements, you would be doing it. In acquirer's book, you would, would we also uh, need to show in separate financial statement because whenever someone is preparing consolidated financial statements, one entity, that same entity except certain uh, in uh, barring certain exceptions they would also be required to prepare separate financial statements separate financial statement means their own financial statement they are standalone what we called before standalone financial statement that is now called separate financial statement and for separate financial statement what would you, what would be the accounting simply investment account recognized at cost or as part in days 109 in that way they would record investment account they won't take recognize all these net assets that is assets and liabilities consideration that is purchase consideration non-controlling interest goodwill or bargain purchase all these things should not be recognized only as we know that if you purchase shares of other company whatever it is 60 percent 80 percent whatever it may be in its own financial statement whatever we did earlier before this in days 103 has been 
uh, there. Before that, what we did, if one company purchases shares of another company, 60%, 80%, whatever it may be, they would only debit their investment account, investment in the shares of that company. And that would be done in their separate financial statements. So there would be, in acquirer's book, there would be two sets. One would be for consolidated, another would be for separate financial statements. Two sets there would be accounting. That is one total picture about business competition to show how are they related. Then I am coming to one by one to a bit detail. Hello. A business comp yes. Sir, can you please just go to the previous slide once again? Yes. Sir. One second. Okay. Sir, uh, sir, uh, can you please just detail the difference uh, between where accounting acquirer is legal acquirer and where accounting <laughs> that acquirer is... That is a difficult play, place. I would be discussing that in another slide. Not okay, here. Sir. Okay. okay sir. I told you every part would be discussed in another slide. And briefly, I would do that. Eh? Not yes, full sir. details, but briefly, I will do that. Then I'm coming one by one. A business combination is a transaction or other event in which an acquirer obtains control of one or more businesses. When after business combination, acquiry continues to exist as a subsidiary, it is to be recorded in the books of the acquirer in two sets. One for consolidated accounts, which has been prescribed under acquisition method of INDES 103, and the other for its separate financial statement, that is for its standalone accounts. Thus, when A Limited purchases, say, 60% shares of B Limited, A Limited is the acquirer company, and B Limited is the acquiry company, and no accounting is required in the books of B Limited. But in the books of A Limited, accounting is required in two sets of accounts. In standalone set, as stated below, note there is no application of INDES 103. For the standalone set, nothing is uh, um, stated or prescribed in INDES 103. Uh, that would be as usual. What is that investment in shares in B Limited debit to consideration credit? How you will be paying that consideration, then consideration would be debit to equity, share capital or cash, whatever it may be. So I am not taking more time for this. Then the next phase, in consolidated set, acquisition method of INDES 103 is applied. Accordingly, the acquirer company in its financial statements recognizes and measures. What they recognize? The identifiable assets acquired, identifiable assets acquired, identifiable liabilities assumed, and any non-controlling interest, NCI, non-controlling interest, in the acquiry. They would recognize this. And how they would measure this? At their fair values, at the acquisition date at their fair values at the acquisition date or it is for NCI, you see. For assets and liabilities, it is only at their fair values. For NCI, two options. At its fair value at the acquisition date or at the non-controlling interest proportionate share in fair value of the acquiries identifiable net assets. So, Suppose their net assets are 6 lakhs, suppose. Then, and the non-controlling interest is 20%. Then their proportionate share, uh, net assets ident uh, identify, not only that, the fair value is 6 lakhs. Suppose its book value 5 lakhs, fair value 6 lakhs. Then 6 lakhs, fair value should be taken. Then 20% of 6 lakhs is come to 1,20,000. If suppose in MCQ it is stated 
that book value five lakhs, care value six lakhs, and uh, NCI twenty percent. Then what would be the proportionate share? Then it would be twenty percent of six lakhs is equal to one lakh twenty thousand. Not twenty percent of five lakhs is equal to one lakh. In that way, if this option is taken, otherwise the fair value either it would be stated or from the consideration you can have an idea. For suppose eighty percent, if you pay for eighty percent, if you pay uh, uh, five lakh sixty thousand. Suppose you pay five lakh sixty thousand for eighty percent. So for twenty percent, what would be its value? Because on fair value, the purchase consideration is measured. Then for eighty percent, if it is five lakh sixty thousand, for twenty percent, it would be twenty percent by eighty percent. That is one fourth of five lakh sixty thousand. That would be one lakh forty thousand. So at its fair value, if it is not clearly stated that what is the fair value of NCI from consideration. Fair value of consideration, you can calculate it, and in that way, any one of the two at your option you can apply at your option. If it is given in the question, then what option you have to apply? Then it is given. Otherwise, whatever be your option, you can apply that. So in that way, the measurement has been stated in the standard. Then the goodwill acquired in the business combination. Or a gain from bargain purchase, which is A minus B, that would be recognized. And how? What would be the measurement? Measurement is A is equal to fair value of consideration transferred. You see, consideration is always measured at fair value. Consideration is not at book value. Earlier, suppose, uh, suppose we issued shares, uh, five thousand shares of. Uh, pay, um, face value rupees ten, so it is fifty thousand, and the issued price is suppose uh, at fifteen, so ten uh, thousand into ten fifty thousand plus five uh, premium issued uh, issued value rupees five fifteen, so it would be seventy five thousand, and that seventy five thousand could have been taken, or in certain other cases. Suppose a greed value is stated that market value is fifteen, but a greed value is twelve. Then twelve thousand, uh, twelve into ten thousand, uh, five thousand, sixty thousand would be taken. In that way, different values would be taken. But here it has been clearly stated: fair value of consideration transferred should be considered. Plus, recognized amount of any NCI in acquiry. Recognized amount means it can be any of these two. Accordingly. Your goodwill value would vary through recognized amount of NCI in acquiry plus fair value of if any previously held equity interest in the acquiry. So if you have already invested, suppose the cost of investment is recorded in your balance sheet at forty thousand, but its fair value is sixty thousand, then sixty thousand should be taken here. Fair value of any previously held equity interest in the acquiry. That this total is A, and B is net of acquisition debt amount of the identified assets acquired and liabilities assumed. That is net assets, identified identifiable net assets, and always they would be measured at fair value. So it is also fair value of net assets. So A minus B. When A is greater than B, then it would be goodwill. If you find B is greater than A, then it would be capital reserve. Earlier we stated capital reserve. Now the name is gain from bargain purchase, and that is also credited to capital reserve, and that is shown under other equity in the balance sheet. Now the things are such that we. Ah, uh, generally, I am just going a bit away from this. But I generally ask in the interviews for the um, uh, uh, teachers, different positions. That as per in days compliant balance sheet, what comes first, assets or liabilities? And that is not clear to many. First come assets, next come liabilities. This is under division two. But as that is not very much. 
um, in all the books and available literature that is not known to me. So it is uh, from the, all the balance sheets you can see that. Uh, but uh, anyhow, that happens. So in the liabilities, uh, equity and liabilities, what are the com components of equity? Two components. One is equity share capital and the other is other equity. And within other equity, all these general reserve, capital reserve, accumulated profits, retained earnings, everything goes in, security premiums, everything in other equity. So two items, two shabhedi. One is equity share capital and the other is other equity. If there is any non-controlling interest, that would also come next under this equity. And that is also uh, there. That is another uh, particular thing for consolidated balance. Okay. Now, I am coming back to here. That recognizes this. And then the other part is also I am mentioning that investor may have previously held equity interest in acquiry. Then previously held investment in acquiry has to be cancelled at fair value at the date of acquisition. Okay. Then entries in the book of books of acquire. What kind of entries could, could be passed? One plain simple idea that identified assets of acquiry consideration credit identifiable uh, identified liabilities, non-controlling interest, previously held inter equity interest in acquiry, and then if this side is greater. It would be goodwill, balancing figure. In that way, you have already found it. Or if you find the identified assets is greater than all the other all the other credit items, then it would be gain from bargain purchase. I have another hour. And I have to cover um, uh, many parts if I can. If it is not uh, comfortably done, then I have to leave some of the slides for the next session tomorrow. Now, I am giving one simple example. A limited acquires 100% shares of B limited for one amount. Uh, that is all the time it is uh, already in some uh, bulletin or um, other places I have placed them and I have just copied it here. Fair value of these net assets at the time of acquisition amounts rupees 8 lakhs. Net assets value. I have not taken total assets and liabilities etc. Net assets I have taken. 100% shares of B limited assets. So it is 100% subsidiary. B limited is existing. It is a 100% subsidiary. Calculate goodwill, journal entries in the books of pay. Then, uh, so you, you understand that this is this class is focused for the pure accounting students who have uh, general uh, interest in accounting and who needs to know particularly this. Uh, areas. Now, solution part. Purchase consideration is 9,60,000. Fair value of net assets, 8 lakhs. Goodwill would be consideration minus net assets. No other figure, only these two figures. Consideration minus net assets. So it comes to 1,60,000. So journal entries, net assets, debit 8 lakh. Consideration credit 9,60,000, goodwill debit 1,60,000 difference. And uh, in separate set, separate set, it is in their consolidated set. In separate set, investment in shares 9,60,000 and consideration 9,60,000. So no recognition of assets or goodwill, etc. This should be the so in the books of acquirer they have to pass this type of entries in two sets separately. In books of B, no accounting. 
there will be no accounting in books of hundred percent shares acquired by a limited. Okay, but there in their books there will be no no entry. Another illustration. A limited acquires eighty percent from hundred percent. I reduced eighty percent of the limit. Same amount. Then what happens? Then purchase consideration nine lakh sixty thousand. Fair value of NCI. I have got fair value of non-controlling interest based on consideration. Consideration for eighty percent. If it is nine lakh sixty thousand, then for twenty percent it would be two lakh forty thousand. So in that way, fair value I found two lakh forty thousand, and fair value of net assets it is given eight lakhs. So goodwill would be consideration plus non-controlling interest minus net assets. It comes to four lakhs. And here, net asset debit, consideration credit, non-controlling interest credit, difference four lakhs is debited to goodwill, and then uh, in the problem it has been stated. I think uh, it is paid by equity share capital, so consideration debit to equity share capital at face value, nominal value. No uh, other things was there. Let me verify. I have forgotten that. Uh, uh, no, at par, but paid by equity at par. Okay, for that reason, it is stated. Now, had it been not at par, suppose twenty uh, percent premium, then eight lakh would be equity share capital, and one lakh sixty thousand would be security premium. It would be divided by hundred percent and twenty percent, twenty percent premium uh, and hundred percent. Paid up capital in that way it would be divided, but it is at par, so total amount is put here. Now, some additional matters I am mentioning. The purchase okay. consideration would no. include consideration transfer plus fair value of contingent consideration. It is in the uh, standard. It has been stated that if if you see that you. Keep some consideration to be paid after two or three years. If you find that the subsidiary is performing well, suppose their profitability is higher than this, or their other sale is greater than that, in on contingent on certain certain measures, if you give additional consideration, then also you have to find out the probability of those additional payments, and then. Find out, calculate the fair value. Those are all mathematical calculation. I am not showing. I am giving only the idea. The fair value of those contingent consideration you have to find at the time of the acquisition, and that would be added to whatever your uh, consideration transferred already. Along with that, you would add that and find your total purchase consideration. And the total purchase consideration you would credit and maintain that. Contingent consideration as a liability because how you would meet that consideration credit and then consideration debit then you issue certain share capital or payment payment of cash and then for contingent consideration you maintain one liability liability for contingent consideration in that way you would pass your journal. The acquirer shall recognize as of the acquisition date a contingent liability assumed in a business combination. If you find The subsidiary company has certain contingent liability uh, beside their balance sheet, not within the balance sheet, outside the balance sheet. Certain contingent liability, and if you recognize that liability, that it is okay, this amount is uh, in your estimate, it is payable. Then if you would recognize it not as as contingent, you would recognize this as liability, identified liability. Accordingly, you would record it in your accounts. Then that reverse acquisition. I am giving one simple uh, one, uh, and these solutions are there. I have done that. I have shown that in different uh, publications also. I can refer that. But I, here, if I take only reverse acquisition, that would take two hours time at least. So it is not possible. Only giving you the idea about that. Suppose a limited acquired sixty percent shares. In B Limited, does A Limited is the acquirer and B Limited 
is the acquiring part, there may be a complication. If A Limited had 1 lakh shares, suppose A Limited already had 1 lakh shares and issued further 1 lakh 50,000 shares as consideration for acquiring 60% control of B Limited. For B Limited, they have to issue as per the market price of the B Limited shares, etc. etc. They have to issue 1 lakh 50,000 shares. Then what happens? Then ultimately, shareholders of B Limited were holding 1 lakh 50,000 shares out of total 2 lakh 50,000 shares of the combined entity because a limited has become the uh, after taking over 60 percent is legally is the holding company parent and it has two lakh fifty thousand shares out of that one lakh fifty thousand is held by the shareholders actually of B limited in such situation and in similar other situations similar other situations there may be in uh, it is one simple case, A limited and B limited. There may be A limited taking over B limited, C limited, or A and B combined to C limited in that way. There may be different other situations. In such situation, in or similar other situations, the legal acquirer, that is who is issuing shares, will be considered as accounting acquiry because they have become minority actually. They have become non controlling because they are holding only 1 lakh out of 2 lakh 50,000. As accounting acquiry and under in this 103, it is called reverse acquisition. In the consolidated set, that is in the holding company's accounts, it is what set is prepared, that is consolidated set, holding company's account, that is the parent company's. In the consolidated set, assets and liabilities of the accounting acquiry will be recognized at fair value. That is, a limited in that in this case would be accounting acquiry and its assets and liabilities would be recognized at fair value and that of the legal acquiry at carrying amount and the B limited which is actually legal um, um, uh, which is legal acquiry and A limited is the legal uh, sorry and that of the legal uh, uh, let me let me write again. In the consolidated state, assets and liabilities of the accounting acquiry will be recognized at fair value. Yes, accounting acquiry would be uh, who is the accounting acquiry? Who is the accounting acquiry? In this case, the A Limited him, itself would be the accounting acquiry, and their assets, own assets, would be recognized at fair value. And the B limited assets and uh, um, that is the legal acquiry, who is the legal acquiry, they are assets and liabilities. Otherwise, they should be taken at fair value. Here, they should be taken at carrying amount. That would be the difference. And that is not very simple thing in your accounting. When you pass journal entries, you would not be able to match and find what would be goodwill, what would be non controlling interest. There would be a very complicated thing. All these things I am not discussing. Only the basic thing I am discussing that this should happen and this reverse acquisition is there in the new standard. That is one uh, variety. And is there uh, someone raised the question? I think to some extent I explained this, thing, although not fully. Uh, can you just give your um, uh, what what you feel now? Can you give your comment? Sir, it is understandable. I think so. Sir, but uh, sir, can you please elaborate something on non-controlling interest, what you earlier mentioned? Non-controlling is a minority interest. This is minority now named interest. as non-controlling interest. Minority okay, interest sir, is sir. always known to everybody, I think. So I didn't discuss that. Non-controlling okay, interest means if you purchase one company, parent company, purchases 70 percent shares uh, in another company. Then such subsidiaries, another the 30 percent company would be uh, 30 percent shares would be called non-controlling interest. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. The minority one, minority. previously known. That minority. Yes. The name is not allowed now. Now I find questions in the uh, final, final account, final of the chartered cost exams. I find that on minority interest, they are setting question on index. How they can maintain that? I I, I, I do not know. It is clearly stated that 
minority interest is no more the term. It is the term. What is it is the term? Non-controlling interest. Okay. Okay, sir. Controlled by the same party or parties both before and after the business government. Now this also I am just giving a view about that. That if in a business combination, all the combining entities or businesses are ultimately controlled by the same party or parties both before and after the business combination. And that control is not transitory, that is not transferring from one place to another. It is a business combin uh, it is a business combination under common control. It has different names. It is called business combination, not simple business combination. It is called business combination under common control. Appendix C of Indes 103 deals with accounting of combination of entities or businesses under common control. So it is separate and it is not there in your IFRS. It is there only in our uh, converged IFRS, that is Indes. Now, common control business combinations shall include transactions such as transfer of subsidiaries or businesses between entities within a group. Suppose one subsidiary is acquiring control of another subsidiary. If that happens, in that case, all are under the parent. So parent remaining before the transaction, the parent remaining uh, in control. Payment, uh, the, uh, the parent was in control and after the transaction, again, the parent wa uh, was in control. So, in such cases, it is common control business combination. Uh, business combination under common control. And in such case, what happens? Business combinations involving entities or businesses under common control shall be accounted as i told you every word i would explain, I try to uh, focus and explain i am not skipping anything of uh, whatever i have stated because i have only collected only the minimum sentences and words that i can present to you for one by word by what explaining that for using the pooling of interest matter shall be accounted uh, by by using, uh, sorry, by using pooling of interest method. The pooling of interest method is considered to involve the following four points I have assembled at one place. Not you will get that if you go through the standards uh, in in such fashion at all. Uh, whatever you go the standards, never you would find whatever is stated in that way because. Here the presentation was in such a fashion that it is very hard to understand what is there actually intended. So, and for that reason, it has become very difficult for the students and for the teachers also to understand things from the from reading the standards. Now, the assets and liabilities of combining entities are reflected at their carrying amount. That means no more fair values would be taken. They would be taken only in their carrying amounts, at their book values, at their balance sheet values. No adjustments are made to reflect fair values or recognize any new assets or liabilities. Nothing. Whatever in the balance sheet, only that would be taken. The equity share capital would be recorded at nominal value only. Equity share capital would be recorded means whenever any issue, equity share capital, would be issued whatever is the market price whatever is the issue price they would be recorded only at nominal value equity share capital for uh, issuing issue yeah, whenever issued that would be recorded at nominal value consideration in excess of equity share capital would be recorded as goodwill consideration means if your consideration Purchase consideration is greater than your equity share capital issued, then it would be recorded as uh, goodwill uh, or capitalism in case of deficiency. 
equity share capital would be recorded at nominal value only. Consideration in excess of equity share capital. Here, this particular thing has another another application. I could clearly state that. Suppose two companies, equity share capital A and B are amalgamated into C. A and B, two companies are amalgamated into C. A had a capital of 5 lakhs and B has a capital of 7 lakhs. Equity share capital. And their total it becomes 5 and 7, 12 lakhs. And purchase consideration is, suppose purchase consideration is not 12 lakhs. It is suppose 17 lakhs or not 17, suppose 13 lakhs. So there is difference of 1 lakh. So consideration is 13 lakhs, whereas the sum total of equity share capital is 12 lakhs. That excess is goodwill. So goodwill measurement is different in this pooling of interest method. And it would be either goodwill or capital reserve in case of deficiency. In the other way, it would be capital reserve. Now, here also, the terms would be used transferee and transferor, not acquirer and acquiring, because it is Indian uh, addition and acquirer and acquiry is the IFRS terms and they have not taken, it is not continued here, here transferor and transferee, these terms are taken. The other equity of the transferor shall be carried by the transferee in the same form in which they appeared in the final statement of the transferor. In the transferor, in other equity, whatever their general reserve, capital reserve, security, premium, etc., etc., that would be carried in the books of the transferee in the same amount and same ways. There will be no difference. In that way, just adding two balance sheets together, if they are, it is amalgamation uh, under pooling of interest method recorded, then that would be done. So it is pooling of interest method. Then I am coming to another issue that we shall discuss about absorption, amalgamation, and reconstruction. That the available account textbook and syllabi based on A13. In most of the syllabus, even nowadays, I find that in the syllabus it is written absorption, amalgamation, external reconstruction under in days. Uh, and uh, in that way. Now, this absorption, amalgamation, and external reconstruction are certainly these are transactions, actual transactions, actual economic events. And in generally, we have the idea about that from our, from our prior years, last uh, uh, 10 or 15 years or more. As per age 14, we have to um, um, prepare those absorption, amalgamation, external reconstruction. Uh, in, but what uh, is uh, important that in all such cases, the vendor company ceases to exist. We cannot give one example of absorption, amalgamation, and external reconstruction where vendor company is continuing to exist, that cannot happen. If you take up that company, the company ceases to exist, the company liquidates, and in that way, you will be doing uh, external absorption, amalgamation, and external. And that happened as per old accounting. Now, in new accounting, but for the companies complying with indes, uh, about what would happen to these events? If such events take place, then what would happen? For events like absorption, amalgamation, and external reconstruction, in this 103 and in this 103 appendix C are applicable. These two would be applicable. If now, for in this companies, this absorption, amalgamation, external reconstruction takes place, then these two uh, part would be applicable. In this 103 and in this 103 appendix C. Two new terms are used, business combination and business combination under common control. These two terms should be used. For absorption, amalgamation, and external reconstruction, no consolidated set of account is required, even for companies complying with INDAS, because there is no question of consolidated set, because the vendor company, that is the uh, the transferor company here, it is the acquiry ceases to exist, liquidate. So there is no question of consolidation. The acquirer company will account for the transactions 
following indes and indes 103 apnesi for preparing individual stand alone financial statements only stand alone financial statements there there will be recorded now i am going for certain examples for absorption already you have shown that but not for this type of cases where the tra transferer company where the acquiry liquidates or uh, or ceases to exist not that type i have done here i am doing that on uh, on a date a limited absorbed b limited not 80% CR or 60% or 100% CR. Absorbed B limited. B limited issued 60,000 equity shares that are trading at 25 on March 31st. When it is trading at 25, we are every reason to assume, and we would also mention that, that the fair value is 25. The book value of B's net assets is 12 lakhs. Equity share capital, rupees 5 lakhs. And other equity is 7 lakhs. The fair value of net assets of B Limited was as it as rupees 13 lakhs. So book value, net assets 12 lakhs, fair value 13 lakhs. And there is no question of any non-controlling interest or minority interest because it is absorbed, fully absorbed. So journal entries complying in days. Index means you have index 103. So I, uh, I would, uh, as I change the slide, I may forget the figure. So I am again issuing 60,000 equity shares, rupees 10 per value, 25. So 60,000 into 25 is equal to 15 lakhs. 15 lakhs is the uh, mark, uh, consideration, 15 lakhs. Book value of net assets, a fair value of net assets, 13 lakhs. And these are the figures. Uh, other equity, 7, equity share capital, 5 lakhs. Now, it is a business combination under index 103. Accounting in the books of A Limited is done under acquisition method. Net assets and considerations are recognized at fair value, and their difference is recognized as goodwill or gain on bargain purchase. Consideration is 15 lakhs, goodwill is 15 lakhs minus 13 lakhs, 2 lakhs. Journal entries, net assets 13 lakhs, consideration 15 lakhs, goodwill difference 2 lakhs. Consideration 15 lakhs, 2 equity share capital 6 lakhs, 2 security premium 9 lakhs because rupees 10 lakhs, uh, rupees 10 uh, 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 face value and rupees 15 security premium. So I think it is clearly stated. One simple example of absorption and what would be done. In the books of the other, B Limited, there would be complete uh, account closing. All accounts would be closed, but that has been not discussed here. Then one case of amalgamation. One case of amalgamation. You see. Let me see what is the slide going on. Amalgamation. There are how many slides? 22, 17, 5 more. Okay. So it would be now it is 12.40, another 35 minutes. Another 30 minutes I would require and that would be okay. Amalgamation. Illustration, another illustration, illustration 2. Uh, on on date, A limited and B limited were amalgamated into C limited. Control of the business lying with the same parties as before. It is stated in the problem because there may be other possibilities. Where it is stated that control of the business, that is A limited and B limited, whoever are controlling that business, after they are amalgamated into C, both these are amalgamated into C, the same parties would be controlled. C Limited issued 80,000 equity shares to A Limited and 75,000 equity shares to B Limited at the nominal value of rupees 10 per share. 
here always we would take the nominal value, whatever be their issue price. So 80,000 and 75,000 into 10, it comes to 50 lakh, 50,000. 80, 75, 1 lakh 55 into 10, 15 lakh 50,000. So we find that they are issuing 15 lakh 15,000 share capital. That is the purchase consideration. The book value of A Limited's net assets 12 lakhs, net assets, equity share capital rupees 5 lakhs, other equity 7 lakhs, 5 plus 7, 12 lakhs, okay. And the fair value of net assets of A Limited was assessed at 16 lakhs, okay, 12 lakhs, their book value, fair value 16 lakhs. The book value of B Limited's net assets was 10 lakhs. Equity share capital 4 lakhs, other equity 6 lakhs. And fair value of B limited net assets was 15 lakhs. Now, fair value we would ignore because it is uh, under common control because same parties are before and after. So, common control means it is pulling up interest method. So, fair value we would ignore. We would only maintain book value and we would find that what is the consideration 15 lakh 50,000. And what is the sum total of equity share capital? Share capital 5 lakhs and here 4 lakhs. Equity share capital 4 lakhs, 5, 5, 4, 9 lakhs. So 9 lakhs against 9 lakhs existing equity capital, they are now issuing, new company issuing 15 lakhs, 50,000. So difference is 6 lakh, 50,000. That would be their good way. Uh, when I am reading that, uh, it is in my mind. Then I am going to the solution. It is a transaction of business combination under common control under index 103 Appendix C, where control lies with the same parties before and after the transaction. Transaction. Business combination is a transaction. Mind that. Business combination is a transaction. So after the business combination, you may write, you may write after the transaction. Pooling of interest method will be applied because under common control, pooling of interest method is applied. Consideration is measured only at nominal value of shares. Difference of consideration and other equity carried with net assets be recognized as goodwill. Uh, here, here I would write down a bit difference, not difference of consideration. Difference of consideration and equity capital would be, uh, and this figure also would give the same thing, but it is simple to write down difference between the consideration and the equity capital, as I earlier read there, would be the uh, goodwill or capital reason. Net assets and other equity of the transfer company will be carried at book value. So here you see, just I have to change this a bit. I'm doing that. Difference of consideration and equity share capital is goodwill or capital reserve. Here it is not bargain purchase, capital reserve. Then we may continue. Consideration to A limited, 8 lakhs. Consideration to B limited, 7 lakh 50,000. Total consideration, 15 lakh 50,000. Other equity, A and B, 7 lakh and 6 lakh, 13 lakhs. Total net assets, 12 lakh and 10 lakhs, 20, 22 lakhs. Goodwill, 15 lakh 50,000 minus minus 9 lakh, 6 lakh 50 thousand. These are what is done. And then just plain one journal entry, one or two journal entries. Net assets debit, A limited, in the books of C limited. Net assets K, uh, debit, B limited. Consideration, 15 lakh 50 thousand. Other equity, as their book value, 13 lakhs. 
total 25 lakh 50,000, uh, 28 lakh 50,000. Here, difference 6 lakh 50,000. Good way. If the other side the difference come, we would write capital return. Then consideration to equity share capital. There should not be any share premium, security premium, etc. In that way, the under common control, it would not take much time, but you need to understand what to be done. Now, this kind of amalgamation, there is another way of doing amalgamation because it may so happen that that A Limited was a big company and B Limited is a small company and and when when this equity shares are given suppose uh, 8 lakh to a and 7 lakh 50 thousand to b suppose it is given not in that way it is given 8 lakh to a uh, 10 lakhs to a and 5 lakh 50 thousand to b and then you would say that then 8 uh, uh, 10 lakh share holdings 10 lakh shares the shareholders or parties holding 10 lakh shares would have control over the entire business and so it may show up in a limited may have a limited shareholders or parties who are belonging to a limited would have control over the entire c limited and then c limited is the legal acquirer but accounting acquirer would be a limited although a limited is not existing but a limited parties are the real controller have real have the real control so in that case it would be considered a reverse acquisition that is not under common control it is simple it is simple business combination not simple under business combination 103 but under reverse acquisition and for reverse acquisition then what would happen uh, in that case, this book values would, not, would be ignored. The accounting acquiry, accounting acquiry in this case, accounting acquiry, who is accounting acquiry? Accounting acquiry, suppose B limited is accounting acquiry. Acquiry, accounting acquiry, B limited. Hello, B limited, sir. yes. Sir, uh, then, then, then what, what the case you stated, whenever there is a... Uh, they, when whenever there is not a 50 50 share in c limited not 50 -50, i have never said i yes. said that there is 10 lakhs and 5 lakh 50 thousand there is clearly it is stated that uh one is holding a huge share another is very small in that case even it is 55 45 it may happen both have have control okay 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 a significant uh, you cannot say that uh, when it is clearly stated that they have both control you cannot say that it, it can be distributed over them but if it is clearly stated or you have other indications that one holding very high another holding very low then you may assume that it is also a case of reverse, reverse otherwise always if it is not clearly stated you would always assume that it is uh, not reverse it is plain um, uh, common control business oh, company yeah. because because whenever you go for reverse acquisition you would be in trouble you will be bringing too much difficulty on yourself unless yeah. you are compelled to do so you won't do so hmm. okay, sir. okay i am not going and the every details of this reverse acquisition that i have done in the um, um, uh, or professional course uh, study materials and something in the certain bulletins uh, in the professional course that is startup course bulletins uh, I have done you can see in where that is available for the all but but here I am not going for the details because that is a bit confusing also that is not so much uh, so much easy okay so so far what I told you have to uh, whether that is understood or not to that extent not fully you can understand because the other non containing interest but how it will be calculated purchase consideration how it will be calculated in case of reverse aggression those things i didn't explain i know that i have explained that i have done that in certain other areas but not here i can do that okay is it is it okay if you are interested you go through the Materials on reverse acquisition is get get that 
from the study materials of the final, uh, cost final or chartered final. And also, because some of them are written by me, I know that it is done by me, and some bulletins also written by me. Uh, so you can you can get some help from that. I have explained that, whatever. That. Okay. Then I am coming to this external reconstruction. If you have already gone through all these things, have you ever seen that ever anywhere it is mentioned how external reconstruction under India is done? In under India, you would never find external reconstruction anywhere. Uh, so, so here I have just assembled all of them that old absorption, amalgamation, external reconstruction, how they would be dealt in the under the new regime. Illustration, another third illustration on, on a date, a limited externally reconstructed into B limit. Now, B limited issued 80,000 equity shares at the nominal value of 10 per share. The book value of a limited net assets was rupees 10 at uh, 12 lakhs. The fair value of net assets was assets 15 lakhs. Only this simplest way, only to show the main thing that how external reconstruction. Now, again. You see the figures: eighty thousand equity shares, uh, book value twelve lakhs. Okay, it is a transaction of business combination under common control, but control lies with the same parties before and after the transaction because it is only external reconstruction. There cannot be any other thing. Same parties would be in control. Pooling of interest method would be applied, and whatever things are there, and then you find the consideration. What is the consideration? 80,000 share, 10, 8 lakhs, and goodwill is, what is your goodwill? Goodwill is, uh, minus 12. Uh, I'm going to the, finding these things. Net assets, 12 lakhs, book value. Consideration 8 lakhs, other equity 6 lakhs. Other equity 6 lakhs. Okay. So, consideration 8 lakhs. So, total is 14 lakhs. Difference is 2 lakhs. And on the other way, what you can say, uh, that uh, they are issuing equity share capital 8 lakhs and their original equity share capital was their original equity share capital was what? Before solution I am coming to previous. B limited issued at the book value of limited net assets was at the uh, Oh, that details was not given here. P limited details was not given. I have missed that. I should have given that. Otherwise, how I could put it? So I am I'm changing it a bit. And so I'm changing it. Equity share and external B limited issued. Net asset was 12 lakhs. Equity share capital rupees six lakhs and other equity. So 12 lakhs uh, divided in equity share capital, 6 lakhs other equity. So what happens when you the purchase consideration is issued 8 lakhs, that means against equity share capital 6 lakhs, you are giving 8 lakhs. That difference, excess payment is your good. Okay. So that is done.
then here also I would write it in the different way. I am not changing because it is same as before. The other slide I have already shown it. So I am not repeating it. Or I am just changing it in this fashion. Difference between equity share capital and consideration. will be recognized as goodwill or capital goods. That's all. So that's all. Okay. Again, I have I have to change something. Because here, I have to change something. Uh, to do is equal to 8 lakh minus Six lakh is equal to is equal to two lakhs. In that way, it would be then it will be clear to all. Okay, and so in that way, three things are explained in that manner. Now I am, although you see in the other way you can also find the good way, but that is the direct way as I have written as it is in the standard this type of instruction was given somewhere. Oh. Is that all? Okay. So it is uh, this far I have done for discussion today. Now uh, we have already finished all these uh, slides uh, a bit before time. Now if you want to, because I was worried that whether I would be able to complete all these slides in time, I maybe I am in a, I was in a hurry. Uh, but if you have any, now we may come to the first slide again to see what I have shown you. And this slide, you see all these parts I have discussed, but in which section this uh, absorption, amalgamation, and external reconstruction would come uh, under in one zero three. It would come under acquisition method. For absorption, it would come under acquisition method. Here, acquisition, uh, where in simple simple case, that is this this case, it is absorption would come under this case. Uh, uh, is that no, it would be because here the in consolidated financial statement that would be not under consolidated financial statement. So that that part is not here, it's absorption, amalgamation and external reconstruction 
that would appear in their separate financial statement, not separate financial, if they are individual, that is standalone financial statements, under index, uh, not in consolidated financial statements, although that would be following index 103. That is the addition I did, so that has been not incorporated here. Here also, Acquiry wins up. Let me see here. Acquiries, individual financial consolidated. Yes, this part. Okay. This part is there. In acquiries, individual financial statements. Acquiry wins up. Then consideration net assets identified goodwill gains as per index 103. That is only one case. It is for absorption. But for amalgamation, it may be a case. It may be a case where it is not under index 103, it would be under index 103 appendix C, that is common control. Or it may be under index 103 reverse acquisition. Reverse acquisition. So, so these two things can happen for amalgamation and for external reconstruction it would be only under common control because for external reconstruction it is always one company is changing to another name a uh, butterfly company caterpillar company is transformed into butterfly company same parties are there so it would be always under common control so that pooling of interest method would be followed so that kind of addition has to be made for this part here also I have to include for uh, amalgamation and external reconstruction pooling of interest option, pooling of interest method option uh, under common control. I should include. As you can do at a year, Mudhiachi, last year, Mudhi, which will be at Kubjuri. Hmm. Yeah, that syllabus to change kore chilo na, pade ekore. Taite to ota ota second semester theke ota first semester ni aasa hoye chilo na. Taite jono ota change hoye gaye chilo. Haan, tumi dekhe na ona, amader data to amader to. I mean, you have to order for a actual policy that can not a past semester or to change for a visual. You see, not to change that to a mother, a mother, yet a dear visual, not to give us an announcement. Tatsi, a mother, university announcement. Tatsi, keep it, keep it. Chair, like a chill, originally to be sure, chill, a poor, or not for the actual cover for that. Yeah, now, uh, okay, if you have any question, you may ask me. Uh, professor, um... Good afternoon, sir. I'm Dr. Veerlevin. Sir, I have one doubt. Uh, I think NCL uh, is not NCI is nothing but the minority interest. I'm right, sir. NCI is nothing but minority interest amount payable to the uh, minority capital. interest is essentially minority, but NCI is not essentially minority. Oh, it can be oh. majority, <laughs> oh, okay. but if it is non-controlling <laughs> with majority, yes, then um, it is NCI. In okay. what way they are? What way they are uh, coming under the non? I mean, uncontrollable situation and non uh, Actually, if you if you find that suppose forty five percent share one is holding with full yes, control, uh, with that forty five percent share, another fifty five is held by heterogeneous mass who who have no unity, nothing. They are fifty five percent. But, but when? 
but when the parent company acquired more than 51 percentage of the shares the remaining shareholders will be uh, called it as what minority shareholders if if you, if one firm holds 51 percent share mm. then it is uh, it is it cannot be minority it would be major because that firm is holding 51 that is majority but even that firm holds 42 percent it can be controlling the company and with 48 uh, 58 percent as another other shareholders may be non-controlling interest that yes, i am yes, saying you yes. understand yes sir, yes sir. and uh, i have one more doubt in uh, and the what way the business speaking, i am not uh, actually okay i, I am just uh, closing this closing this uh, uh, then i'm going back to the um stop presenting okay now i can see you yes sir who who, who is asking actually yeah yeah i'm dr velavan sir i'm dr velavan i am i'm asking i am asking okay okay yes okay. yes <laughs> dr <laughs> dr and Bhavadini. i have uh, one more doubt yes. for us sir yes, in, yes. in what way the business combination is differ from holding company system ah uh, in what way what way the combination of business the business combination, combination. yeah combination business combination is differ from the concept of holding company combination of business differs from holding company yeah 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 holding company sir uh, what professor uh, dr velavam is asking is how this business combination is conceptually different from consolidation holding company. Oh, maybe yeah maybe 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 consolidation from consolidation yeah, yeah. Now, if suppose in case of absorption, amalgamation, external reconstruction, what I mentioned there, is that yes. holding company? Is there any consolidation? There is no consolidation, but that is business combination. Oh, yes, yes. Again, you understand? Again, many consolidations are there, but there is no business combination. Those are uh, some, to some extent, they are common, but they are some different parts also which are not common disjoint they are actually not disjoint that is something which is consolidation but not business combination something is there which is business combination but not consolidation suppose you are holding 30 percent share of another company is it business combination are you having have you have control no 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 but is would there be any consolidated financial statement but, yes. in, but in both the case, all the companies, both the transferer and transfer company, they have a, uh, their own set of account statement. And also the, the parent company uh, should prepare a consulted uh, I mean, uh, statement, but uh, no need to prepare a consulted statement for uh, the transferer company. The transfer Why not? Company, if you are holding 30% share of another company, yes, sir. would there be any consolidated financial statement, yes or no? No. Yes. There you have to prepare consolidated financial statement where under mm -hmm. equity method you have to show that equity method is there. Yes. But yes, it yes. is consolidated financial statement. And oh. again, you have to play prepare separate separate financial statement, not only consolidated financial yes. statement and separate from both when you are holding 30% share of another company. So in that case, it is consolidation. You are not parent. You are not parent. But yes, the other company is your associate. Is your associate. Associate. The other okay, company sir. is your associate. Oh, I'm clear, sir. I'm clear. You need to prepare associate or you are in joint venture. You need to prepare consolidated financial statement. And yes, consolidated financial statement under equity method. Another method. Equity yeah, another method. method. Yeah, not yeah. by combining assets and liabilities. Not this ordinary sense. But, but consolidated consolidation is there it is not under 110 but some 28 uh, uh, in days 28 would be required and that is also consolidated financial statement okay. and these things are there and tomorrow uh, we would discuss all these things that mm -hmm. when you are holding suppose 15 percent share yeah, how yeah. you will be accounting when you are holding 20 percent but, but, no but, but in india holding company system is not in practice i'm right no practice, it is already there it has been yeah. effective uh -huh. but we the in the book and syllabus and in the contents they are not ready yes, and sir, yes, sir. the teachers should be our first and then the students 
Yeah. Uh, and we are, you are all teachers. So I have uh, brought all these uh, things before you for being. Uh, for but, 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 but being a chartered accountant, you know, you know, but even uh, CA, we are uh, teaching. We are teaching the concept of holding company, but it is not in practice now. What is the necessity to teach this system to the student, professor? It is not in practice yes, yes. today. Why? Yes. Uh, that's the chartered accountants are also actually I am I used to take certain uh, their continuing classes etc for them also. So yes, fine, yes. that is not easy to them also. They are also venturing and even big chartered accountants told me that no 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 one zero three and hundred ten are different. They are mm. not at all same. They are different. Yes, and according to the standards language, their objectives, their scopes, they are different. Yes, but yes, in that I content I we go through, and for that reason, I started with that. That in business combination, you have to recognize non-controlling interest. Mm -hmm. You have to recognize goodwill. How it can happen mm -hmm. if it is different from consolidation and in consolidated balance sheet? When you record goodwill, at what value you have to record goodwill? At the value as you have computed based on one zero three in this one zero three, it has been clearly stated there. Yes, yes, yes. See, I know the chartered accountant, big chartered accountants, they are experienced and they are saying me that they are different. They are not yes, at sir. all together. You can ask. And, but I started with that in this situation <laughs> because I thought that some experts, some teachers, some well-known persons would be there. They would be, to, to some extent, they may differ, but okay, it is interesting to place before them these ideas and my views. Okay. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for your uh, patient, uh, your interest in the subject. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I, I am closing my session today. Tomorrow at 10, I will be again starting. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Professor Mass, yes. Dr. Mukherjee. Yeah. Uh, uh, would, would you please take over? Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, uh, dear participants, I hope you have seen. Uh, the reason why I selected Professor Pal as the resource person or as the opening batsman of this match. Uh, because as a teacher of accounting and finance, I know that this is an area which is very much great to most of us. Uh, Dr. Uh, Velavam, you will accept that fact that this consolidation, uh, business combination and erstwhile terms which are used like uh, amalgamation, absorption, yes, and reconstruction. Special, special thanks to Professor Sir. Special thanks to Professor Sir. <laughs> exactly. And that Thank is why you. I, I, Thank I you, gave Thank two sessions uh, dedicated. I discussed with Sir. Sir is very much tied up. So it's yes. uh, it's my privilege and it's privilege of all of us that Sir could spare some time out of his busy schedule. Uh, Thank so you, so uh, I'm really personally looking forward to tomorrow's session. And uh, with this, I would like to say that uh, we will be sharing the video links with you all. So definitely, uh, I, I understand as I uh, participate in other FDPs, I understand that it is not always possible to grasp everything during this one and a half hour sessions. So definitely you all, including myself, we will get time uh, of the material go th going through the PPT and the video session, uh, which Sir has discussed. And definitely uh, with Sir's permission, I will share Sir's email ID with you. Sir, can I do that? So that if they have yes, any yes. questions in the letter, they can email it to you. Okay, uh, after tomorrow's class, I would after be transferring the PPT also. That. They exactly. would get that. I am transferring it to you and they, would, yes, they can get it. I will do the needful. I will do the needful. Okay. So I, I would uh, thank sir and thank you is not enough for me. So I would uh, to express my gratitude towards Anand Mohan sir, AMP sir for us. And I would like to say that we have reached the end of this session. So now uh, we will have another session from sir tomorrow. At, uh, and that will be the first session of tomorrow's that is from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So uh, in the meantime, you people can go through whatever said discussed. And if you have any query, we can have a five, 10 minutes time tomorrow to uh, answer your uh, questions which you have. Otherwise, as I have said, I will share Sir's email ID, PowerPoint presentation and video lecture with you all so that you can go through it later on. Well, Thank well, you. Uh, uh, you would yes, also sir. send me one copy of uh, whatever um, video lecture. Huh? Sure, sir. sure. I will. But what I said, I do not 
no, I will also see that if there these are extempore lectures of yours, sir. These are your extempore lectures, which we have heard so many times. I will surely share uh, this with you, sir. I will share the link with you. So, thank you, thank you, sir. So, uh, this will be the same join link, link, so you can join the session using the same link tomorrow. And that is very good of you. That is very good of the system that with the same link I can join. Exactly. There you, I need not inquire for any other links. Exactly. Very good sir. arrangement. Very good. Sir, arrangement. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank okay. So, thank dear you. participants, thank you so, all. Thank you, thank all you the sir. Participants. Thank you so much for this engrossing session. And sir, I can see in the chat box uh, there are uh, many uh, participants who are commenting that very informative session, very nice uh, session. Uh, uh, Dr. Omit Majumdar yes, has yes, said yes. AMP, sir, is great as usual. So, sir, many known and unknown friends of us are commenting. Yes. Okay. okay. So, okay. with this, sir, with your permission, I end this session now. So, yes, just a yes. few words to the participants that we will end the session now. Your attendance for this session will automatically get recorded in the Google Suit platform. And we will share it through the WhatsApp group, the attendance. And uh, we will again have the next session from uh, after one and a half hours. We have uh, one and a half, uh, one hour, 15 minutes break, honestly, not one and a half hours. That is uh, 2.30 sharp. We will start the session and we will uh, activate the link from 2.25. So you will have five minutes time to join and we will start. And the session is uh, will be taken by uh, Dr. S.K. Gupta. So thank you. I thank all of you for being uh, uh, active and uh, for showing your patience during this session. Thank you. Namaskar to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It's my, my pleasure. Thank you, sir. So leave the meeting one by one, then I will close the session. Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome.